Hi, and welcome to the Conservation Lab at the George Eastman Museum. I am Taina Miller, Conservator in Charge, and... I am Sarah Casto, Assistant Conservator. Today, we're going to show you a few of the things that we do here in the Conservation Lab. Founded in 1975, this was the first conservation lab in the world dedicated solely to the care of photographic materials. The lab contains tools, supplies, and equipment conservators use for examination and care of photographs of all kinds. Over the decades, it has hosted various educational programs to spread knowledge about identification, conservation, and preservation of photographs. Documentation is an important part of conservation. Each photograph chosen for an exhibition is first thoroughly examined to assess its current condition and to ensure it can be displayed safely. To maximize its lifespan, we also track and limit the display time and give recommendations for maximum light levels in the exhibition galleries. When examining a photograph's condition, we are especially interested in any signs of chemical deterioration, such as fading and discoloration, but also in physical damages, such as tears and creases, as well as biological damages, such as mold and insect activity. The written examination report is recorded into the museum's collection database, where it becomes a part of the object's permanent record. Along with visual examination and written reports, conservators take images to document a photograph's condition and the results of conservation treatment. These images are important because they clearly illustrate our written descriptions and any changes made during treatment, which is an essential ethical practice. In the lab's documentation room, we use a copy stand and studio lights to take a variety of images before, during, and after conservation treatment. Here, raking light creates shadows across the surface of this blueprint to emphasize the surface texture, including the many creases and tears in the paper support. Once the lights are adjusted and the camera is focused, we take our image. Finally, we use image editing software to make sure the photograph accurately captures the details we are interested in before adding the images to the museum's database. We use microscopes a lot when working on photographs. The magnified view aids the examination, improves our understanding of the possible condition issues, and is helpful when trying to understand what type of photograph it is we are looking at. There are also conservation treatments that require a high level of detail. Some treatments address aesthetic concerns or how the photograph looks, but most of the treatments we perform improve the physical stability, like here, where I am consolidating the flaking emulsion along the edges of this photograph. In any case, our interventions are designed to be reversible and as minimally invasive as possible. And we always discuss the likely outcomes with the curators before we begin. It is important for conservators to understand what materials each photograph is made of. When we aren't able to visually identify the type of photograph that we're working with, we turn to analysis. X-ray fluorescence spectrometry, or XRF, is an analytical tool used to identify inorganic elements. The XRF exposes a small area of the photograph to low energy X-rays. In response, the elements present emit electrons. The XRF software plots those emissions as a spectrum which we use to identify elements that commonly form a photographic image. The elements detected or not detected using XRF help us identify the type of photograph we have. Thanks so much for joining us. And if you'd like to learn more about what we do here at the museum, please visit us on our website.